John Eiley, Performance Director for Caterham F1 team. Abu Dhabi is one of the new generation of tracks designed by Herman Tilke. Formula One have only been there the last three years. It's a harbour Monaco style of track, but is quite different to Monaco in having two very high speed sections, um, just after the start finish line, and also down to turn eight, uh, I think the second longest straight in Formula One. Coming back to the start finish line from there, it has quite a technical section, quite a tricky section. Probably most noted for 2010 end of championship uh, fight and because of that noted for difficulty in overtaking. Uh, last year 2011 it had two DRS zones and again possibly overcompensated for overtaking because people who overtook during the first section then return the overtake in the second section. Uh, it's quite a high grip circuit. It's also very entertaining, I would say, in terms of the environment, the hotels, the atmosphere, um, particularly when it's been the last race of the season. Our suspension setup on the car is all about um, getting the right car balance, car grip, um, and also a trade between mechanical grip and aerodynamic grip. So you tend to be able to set up the car uh, quite softly, particularly on the rear of the car for traction phase and for slow speed corner exits. Whereas in high speed corners, you tend to want the car stiffer, um, both in pitch and roll to try and make sure the aerodynamic platform is in an ideal operating window to extract the high speed aerodynamic performance of the car. This is our 2010 car. Um, our current car is off racing at the moment, but I can still talk in broad terms that this is fairly typical um, Formula One front suspension. It's composed of a steering arm down the front, and then an upper wishbone, and then an identical lower wishbone below, and then a push rod that transfers the load from the wheel back into the spring damper unit, which sits in front of the chassis here. Um, all of these elements are controlled by the regulations. Um, there's been a trend for these elements to get uh, lifted and tidied more and more aerodynamically over time, normally trying to move it away from the front wing so that the front wing is uninterrupted and some of the structures from the front wing are able to move down the car more easily. Each of these elements is controlled by regulation, so they have to be symmetrical in section they have to respect a certain aspect ratio, which is a, a length to thickness ratio of three and a half. And they also have to be certain sizes. Um, these are all things that are optimized uh, generally year on year to make sure not just that the mechanical aspects of the suspension are the best they can be, but also that the aerodynamic influence that each of these elements has on the rest of the car is either minimized or even enhancing the other aerodynamics on the car. The suspension is um, this configuration to keep the tyre and the wheel in the best orientation possible during all of the phases around the track. So under braking, through cornering and through uh, exit conditions, you want the tyre and the contact patch of the tyre to be achieving the maximum grip it possibly can. So. The suspension is basically a very rigid structure to make sure there isn't um, geometry movement that you don't want between the tyre and the chassis, but also compliant in the axes you want so that if you hit a bump or if you have a, a strong braking phase, the tyre and the uh, car are always generating the best grip they possibly can. Because of the aerodynamic aspect um, and also because of things like centre of gravity, typically racing cars are, are massively um, highly sprung cars so that the suspension movement tends to be very, very small. And that's basically to minimise the amount of change and the amount of movement from an optimum position. Um, similarly, uh, the amount of uh, steering angle that we use is quite small, apart from on some special tracks like the Lowe's hairpin at Monaco. We will tend to do special suspension just for that one cornering condition. 
but typically the amount of steering input is much less and some of the uh, controls on the wheel geometry through stiffness and through optimization is much, much smaller compared to a road car. Around Abu Dhabi, you have, uh, I think it was described by one of the drivers, um, very unique and very, very different types of corner. So your suspension setup has to be uh, quite flexible in achieving uh, stiffness and compliance in the right ratios at the right time around the track. And as ever, it's normally vehicle dynamics and race engineering that are looking for the best compromise of spring, roll, damping, uh, tire pressures, and also aerodynamics. And all of that is linking the car via the suspension to the tire, and the tire is ultimately where all those forces are extracted and, and utilized. Generally, I think suspension geometry across Formula One is quite refined. Uh, you can get um, geometry wrong in terms of some of the characteristics on the car. Also, particularly with some of the tyre utilisation, you have a new tyre manufacturer such as Pirelli coming into Formula One. You may find that some of the characteristics of those, the suspension in the Pirelli tyre period needs to be reviewed, revised and re-optimised compared to previous tyre suppliers. Technical briefing, Abu Dhabi.